Hi, let's start by defining the obvious because I assume that no one out here knows this definition. Bad, of poor quality or a low standard. Wow, I hope all of you out there instantly busted a nut at that definition. For my high effort content, you should like and subscribe. Bad levels are really common in the Geometry Dash video game, but why would you beat them? Well, I do think there are some reasons why you would decide to destroy the plaque off the teeth of bad levels, besides being a dentist, of course. They, for example, teach you new stuff, give you very memorable achievements, and they have a lot to offer that a lot of high quality levels actually cannot. Which is why you should start beating bad levels as soon as possible. Yes, this is a recruitment camp. When beating a level of negative quality, you will quickly come to realize that the gameplay in these so-called masterpieces is very much not the traditional way of making gameplay. Except for very few exceptions, a lot of these levels have very bad hitboxes, weird transitions and some of the most awkward timings known to man. That makes a lot of these levels extremely odd and hard to approach, which is the exact reason why you should approach them. Just like how you should approach a free candy van or that shady guy in the back of the alleyway that consistently wears a big ass puffer jacket even when it's summer, you simply must just approach with caution and knowledge of what you want from him. Every supplier has its price after all. Psst. I would recommend the green pills because they make you feel like you're going through puberty in reverse. Speaking of pus leaking hotspots, the nature of these garbage levels leads to a very interesting learning experience and often layers of frustration only matched by Proxima. After a while, you've completely reconstructed all of the neurons in your brain and will somehow be consistent at every single type of dog shit. For some reason, every single level that I have played in the bad levels category has become extremely consistent after like a couple of hours of playing which is really fast compared to a lot of other levels. I theorize that this is because a lot of these feature new timings that you, you know, haven't gotten used to yet and your brain doesn't get lazy while learning it. And learning these new timings splits them into your muscle memory repertoire, which is a very good thing, especially if you start rising up the ranks of extreme demons later on. When you eventually survive the most awful shit you've ever played in your entire life, you will eventually notice that awkward timings and weird gameplay feel far less alien and weird and frustrating like it used to. Like the president always likes to say, sticking an iron rod up your ass makes you far more open to anal. Silly Joe Biden. You can actually use this information in your day-to-day -day life as well because in a lot of daily situations, this is a very similar case. We're just forcing yourself to go into this uncomfortable situation that you know you don't like and you feel alien to will actually make you more comfortable to it, even in normally mundane situations. It's like going out making you better at, you know, human contact. And a lot of you guys, I think, need to do that really quickly. Who am I getting? Most of you are still in school. In GD's case, you really do notice this very notable side effect of beating shit like Starcore Inferno when you're beating some harder levels. It just got way less frustrating to beat these very, very difficult levels and oftentimes also the less difficult levels than it used to, which believe me is a very, very good thing. So what if that didn't convince you to search for the cookie list? Well, that's probably because you question if it's worth your sanity. Well, what if I told you that my most memorable achievements in life are me finally conquering those conquests of cancer? Quite the statement, you might assume, but rest assured that the biggest challenges also leads to the biggest and best achievements. I'm such a good motivational speaker. <laughs> I'm making myself cry. My stalker completion, which is sadly lost media because of my shadow play kind of choosing to make me consider packing a rifle and gently arguing with the Nvidia stuff about how much their shitty f <laughs> software can strongly go suck a dick. Either way, I beat the level on my last attempt, fluking it from the last robot click right here to the end while my mom was cheerleading me on in the background. Quite the roller coaster of emotions then occurred when I realized that this legendary moment will never be witnessed by anybody but me. If I get my memory wiped, I will still clearly remember that moment. It's just become part of my DNA at this point. Moments like this just realize how much power these level completions can have for me. It's like they're dangling a stake in front of your head. On top of that, the most invigorated I've ever felt was when I beat some of the levels off the bad levels wheel. On top of that, usually you don't even have to beat a bad level for you to have a very vulgar reaction upon watching it first. Like watching such a so-called piece of art just gets a reaction out of you that no generic level would ever even try to get out of you. It's moments like this that make me think 
that beating bad levels should be a more common practice. Don't even get me started on the fact that levels like this offer you an experience and visual stimulant that most levels just don't offer. The stimulation of looking at garbage is just something that the human body cannot deny. Levels that have, you know, quality decoration for example, just don't have the charm or experimentation that something like this has to offer. It's kind of like listening to a bad song. There is something about it that just sticks with you and makes you kind of happy from the inside. Of course, occasionally you will have a speed core in there, similar to having a dance monkey in your bad songs playlist. But overall, it's a very weird experience you can learn a lot from. I mean, my most favorite achievements in this game are beating stuff like Invisible Deadlocked, Infernoplex and Stalker after all. Which, as an intellectual, I would not consider good levels. Just because something doesn't qualify to your predetermined standards doesn't mean a level can't be a great piece of memorabilia. Honestly, more than anything, I'd suggest starting out with some classic shit levels before diping into the deepest end. Stuff like Russell's Reaction or Disposer's Demons are infamously stupid levels that have some sort of a reputation for being playable, maybe? I mean, still don't go in expecting much, but it's better than stuff like Proxima, Majesty, Speedcore, Formula X. These are levels that I would never recommend, even though they are very bad and often also very funny. It's like a racist guy on Twitter. You think they are sarcastic, then you realize that they are dead ass. So just try and avoid rednecks and neo-nazis and instead laugh at the SS Sniper Wolf situation. So yes, instead of having a social life, sex and winning a watermelon chugging competition, just have a bunch of garbage levels on your demon counter. Considering that this is an essay, it should have a proper conclusion, but that's for next time.